Thunder. 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 Thunder Geeks all live. Hello, Thunderians. You're listening to Thunder Geeks brought to you by 102.7 FM CILU or around the world at luradio.ca or streaming live at facebook.com slash thundergeekspeak. That was Mary Amber with Zombie Man. And I'm Andrew. I'm the Illuminati. I'm Megan. And I'm Kyle. And, and we're, we're your Thunder, Thunder Geeks. Geeks. Welcome again to another fantastic episode. Of course, if this is your first show, hi, we're your Thunder Geeks. Each week we like to get together, talk about the nerdy stuff we've been up to this week, what's going on in our community, and just try to make it laugh for an hour and a half. And uh, do other things to Andrew to make him go insane. And, uh, yeah, Rob, Robin generally likes to, to torture me. And, uh, it's one guy, man. Ten more and two hundred. 190 and 10 more in two. What? This is episode, episode 190. 190. 10 more. And oh, hit we hit 200. Oh, man. I, I still dream of making a clip show. It's like the hardest thing ever because we have, like, you know. Because we're lazy? Well, it's like 100. <laughs> we'll take 190 episodes and multiply that by an hour and a half. What's what's another 90 added on here? Seven. 75, that's actually sure. correct, so that's going to be 165 hours is a lot to go through. I just need a fast-forward button. I you guys like, just be chipmunks. I just have like 570 hours of Binding of Isaac. <laughs> How many hours of One Piece right now, Kyle? Uh, no, I'm taking a small break from the Grand Line to catch up on everything I missed in the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Kyle is back with us. Welcome back. We're glad your uh, your health is... Alien, yeah. It just, yeah, the health is nailing it, right? <laughs> Doing it. <laughs> okay, so you two should. So if you're 87 hours into uh, Digimon Bomb Pod, okay, maybe no. you should be taking. Oh, so you I, are. So as I well? got the, the new Digimon uh, Cyber Story or Cyber Sleuth Hacker's Memory, right? Okay. So it goes. Would you like to import your save file from the other game? And I'm like, ah, yeah, I guess so. And it just slaps on the 87 hours I played in the first Digimon, and I'm like, oh, no, that just, just looks sad. That's just in four days. That's nothing. <laughs> on a, on a first, the first one was like $20 for the game, so I mean, not a bad playtime. Definitely got your money's worth for that mm, Digimon. What, what I'm hearing is Kyle's volunteering a clip show in 10 day episodes. Yeah. Ten weeks. In ten weeks. <laughs> Come on, Kyle, 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 you can be Troy McClure. Uh, see. Hi, I'm Troy McClure. You might remember me from such episodes as... Whatever. The day my butt went crazy and <laughs> stabbing things. The family story. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that is kind of the title of it, if it were our family. Because Let's see. Um, concussion... Uh, he punched me. I'm sure some sort of injury was dealt by you to me. Uh, I have not done anything such, sir. Sir, I've no, never. He almost killed me. Oh, yeah, you used to punch Kyle on a regular oh, basis. and you yeah. sniped the candy down the back of my throat. So one time, <laughs> yes! <laughs> one time I threw a gobstopper so perfectly into Kyle's open mouth while he was just talking. <laughs> and it went to the back of his throat. And he <laughs> I want that in the clip show, just like that one moment. Just Kyle choking. <laughs> if any fans out there know which episode number that is, please let us know. <laughs> Let's see, I know I've hurt you several times. Uh, okay, I, off the top of my head, you exploded a lighter in my face that yeah. took off a little bit of my eyebrow. I thought you were staring at me while you're saying this, oh, and no, I'm no, like, this I is, have done nothing of the sort. Um, we have shot fireworks at each other <gasps> quite a few times. That was amazing. Uh, the potato I took a chip. What was the potato chip? The one chip. The spicy challenge thing. Oh no! That I was like all of us. No, I cheated. <laughs> on he that. cheated that. Remember? Yeah, that's why. He was evil for doing that. Oh, I hurt Rob oh. emotionally. Oh. Yeah, that was an emotional hurt. Oh, that's easy. That that was deep, you know, deep cuts. Because <laughs> I was able to just sit there, just pretending that I uh, was just the ultimate, you know, test of spice. While I had a bunch of chloroseptic in my mouth, and the whole thing was numb. <laughs> <laughs> And we love each other. Genuinely, we do. But, Rob, I think it's, I have to say it's mostly your fault, as uh, you taught me. It's not about the competition. It's what loopholes you can find in it. He's the friend that sits there and goes, hey, you should do this. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you know what? I'm going to try jumping across the playground equipment. 
<laughs> I mean, you, you actually did it, though. I held on, but there's still a mark there somewhere. <laughs> My shit is still scarred. Hey, I'm not the one who said, hey, you should do dry and get raw sunburned permanently. Actually, we were the one. It was a year and a half that it last, lasted. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, and uh, Thunder Pride, of course, uh, is Pride Month once again. So, guys, happy Pride. Yay! Yay. Ooh, that means we get to, our do, get to do our big gay show, my favorite episode of the year. Yes, it is It is fantastic. I will be pulling out some hot tracks and I know. other hot things. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, 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 my. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, my. But every week we like to get on and talk about what we've been up to this week. Megan, what have we been up to this week? I watched I Zombie. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys didn't continue with that. No. <laughs> oh, oh, let me guess. Major is hot. Donnie does something cool. Donnie! And you no love him more. Oh my god, hotness. I want to bang her. Raul Coley is the sexiest man on earth right now, apparently according to Megan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but last time I talked about Eye Zombie, Kyle was like, this Donnie character sounds like the He is. And I proved it. But that's not what I'm here to talk about this week. This Donnie, week, Donnie, you're out of your element here. Donnie. Donnie. Donnie is out of his element. <laughs> this week, know your role, Donnie. I'm talking about <laughs> zombies. <laughs> Okay, when we were joking about her becoming Tina Belcher, we were joking, oh, no. and now it's... How many zombie butts were you looking at, Megan? None of them, no. This one was not not a, not a fun, sexy rom-com or anything like that. What? Fun, sexy zombie fun, rom-com. Fun, sexy zombie rom-com. You know, for those fun, sexy zombies. <laughs> I watched an, a movie that uh, I found on Netflix. It's called Cargo, and it stars... Martin Freeman, and if you're not familiar who Martin Freeman is, where is the rock that you've been living under so I can drag you out from under it? Hey, check this guy to the galaxy. Fargo. Black Hobbit. Panther. Uh, the uh, Hobbit. Oh, what? Uh, we were trying but... to look with the more obscure films. What? Nobody likes The Hobbit anymore. Nobody. That's why I was That's why I was berating. I'm like, oh, Sherlock. come on, to give a good role. Sherlock, yeah. Sherlock. Oh, there you go. Yeah. That other one you would have other... <laughs> 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 Very hard to find porno. We don't. What? <laughs> okay, hold up, hold up. Here on Thunder Geeks, we like to talk about mature things like comic books and cartoons, and some of the subject matter can be really mature too. So, listening discretion is advised. With the CRTC out of the way, hey, bro, wait, wait, wait. Martin Freeman has a porno? No, but there's one uh, male actor who looks shockingly like him. I think he can count on which one. Oh, yeah, no, I know this one. <laughs> yeah, there, there, there is a porn star out there who looks a lot like Martin Freeman. <laughs> oh, okay, so I have some research after the show, but Megan, research. Megan, Cargo, so I I know this was a short film as well, and that was something that uh, I think we saw a few years ago, yeah. and it was really, really cool, uh, where like they did an entirely silent film. Well, it wasn't entirely silent. Well, okay, not silent, but no one spoke. Mostly, most, for the most part, there was it was mostly silent. It was in 2013. It was uh, an Australian short film. Uh, it won the festival. So you're saying it took place in Bush World? <laughs> Kyle. Bush World! Bush World Zombies, Kyle. Bush World Zombies. Oh my god, it can't get any worse. <laughs> <laughs> I hate zombies in the first place. Can I get you to say brains in Australian zombie? Brains. No. Brines. <laughs> Brines. 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 Good ad. It's like a taste of your brines. <laughs> Oh my god. Morty, Morty, we need to get some of the brines. Brian's. 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 <laughs> Brian's. Oh my god. <laughs> so, my Brian zombies in cargo. So, so. The short film featured a husband who had gotten into a car accident. His wife had turned, scratched him. Now he's on the clock to save his infant. He has to save his baby. He has to save his baby. So, it's also in Fargo. Yes, that's what I just said! <laughs> it's so funny, but it's also in Cargo. I said, He's in Cargo and Fargo. Yeah, Fargo and Fargo. Cargo and Fargo. It rhymes. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's a very similar concept in this one, except um, the zombie apocalypse has been going on for a while, and it's very evident because there's actually care packages that have been issued for people who have the disease. Oh, nice. So basically it comes with a watch that has a timer on it, uh, 48 hours, oh. um, and basically an ice pick that you use to kill yourself. Um, I don't you... want an ice pick. What is this kit? 
<laughs> give, give me like a single flare. Like I can't do an ice. Pick. I'm not strong enough to jam an ice pick into well, my own it, brain. It's like it's like you you put it on your head and then you press the button and it. Oh, there's a button. Okay. Yeah. As long as there's a, as long as it's like it's an electric ice pick. Yeah, it's pretty brutal. Um, and it comes with like instructions to, to show you all the symptoms of what will happen when you turn into a zombie. These are the grossest zombies I've ever seen in my life. They have like bile leaking out of their eyes and their nose and See? their mouth, and it's just gross. It, it sounds like you're describing Kyle last week. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was kidding, but you just described Kyle last week. It's just this really orange, goopy, sticky stuff, and it looks horrid and like, oh. Uh, Kyle, what color is your bile? Depends on the week. Black. Hey, oh. Kyle. No, it's been black, and the last time it was lime green. Can, can, can you sue, like, this movie for using your likeness? <laughs> We're in Canada. We don't sue things. Yeah, and also they you don't have to say sorry. And, sorry. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's all right, bud. <laughs> like, what color is your bile? It's like, what color is your parachute? So you're black and lime green? Uh, it's also been red, orange. Oh, the rainbow. Geez, yeah. You're lucky chimes in over here. Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Martin Freeman plays the dad, Andy. And his wife Kay and his baby Rosie are on a boat in the river. This is the only safe place right now because there's no human contact. There's no zombie contact because, you're, again, you're on the river. There's nobody else. So they live on a houseboat right now. Um, unfortunately, they are running out of provisions and the baby's going to starve. So what does they have to do? They have to go Andy ahead. has to go on an adventure. Andy has to go on an adventure. <laughs> <laughs> Andy has to go on an adventure into an a yacht that had been crashed into and sunk. The um, last time Martin Freeman went on an adventure, Dragon tried to eat him. <laughs> but he didn't go on a boat. I'm yeah. on a boat. There was no boats in The Hobbit. There weren't? No. I never actually saw They walk. Inside. There was boats. That's Lord of the Rings! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, The Hobbit could use a boat. They also walk in The Hobbit. There is no boat in The Hobbit. Yeah, always have boats, man. Yeah, but Martin Freeman wasn't on it. Sure he was. Shenanigans. This is where... Kay gets infected because he goes to search for food and everything. He says, no, it's not dangerous. It's fine. Carl. He, he goes to take a nap with while watching Rosie, and she, Kay decides it's a good idea to go on the yacht, too. So she goes over there, and she gets bitten. And in 48 hours, she's going to turn into a zombie. They try to rush her to a hospital. She ends up dying anyways. So now... <sighs> Andy, sorry, I kept my Andy. call it Andy. So now Andy, <laughs> yeah, he has to, now that he's infected because she scratched him after she turned, they kind of reenact the accident from the cargo short film. Oh, okay. Now he's infected too, and he has to find someone to take care of his daughter before his he dies. His baby. He has to find someone to take care of his baby before he dies. Don't do it. <laughs> it's too loyal fruit. I know you're going for the dingo. Get out of here. <laughs> he just gave his baby to a dingo. It'll take good care of her. Going for the dingo, a fantastic Australian euphemism. This baby is it's cursed. This baby is cursed, unfortunately. Like, it's true. It's a cursed baby. But it's an Australian. <laughs> that makes actual sense. Yeah. Everything that is born in Australia is deadly. The funniest thing is, there's a family on the riverbank, and, uh... He pulls up and he's like, oh, hello, people. Oh, my goodness. It's been so long. Maybe they have, maybe they can help us. And immediately the dad, like, pulls a gun out of his pocket. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, it's the South. I thought you were going for the, the usual cannibalism route that they find in the first families. I thought Megan was going to be like, ooh, new husbando. <laughs> Guy instantly grasped for a gun. Yup. Was it a nice gun? Megan, were you attracted to him? No, oh. I wasn't. No, no, I wasn't really into it. Um, what about the zombie? There was... No, like I said, these zombies are like I don't like these zombies. So are you saying like you don't like? Gross. So are you saying Kyle's super gross? I am. You seen that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to defend you here, buddy. There's no defending that. <laughs> um, she ends up bringing the baby to a woman named Etta, and she tells him everything about who she sh who he should find to give the baby to. Unfortunately, he is the the man that she sends him to, named Willie, is dead. He's a zombie, and he is oh. being trained. And held held uh, like in a safe space by a girl who is like a native resident of Australia. Australia yeah. Because what I liked about this movie is that they show actually like Australian tribes oh, and yeah. natives because they, you barely ever see that, you know. So that's what I really enjoyed about this movie. Um, so I didn't even write. Oh, her name is Thumi. There we go. Thumi. Thumi. Um, so they run into each other and. 
you know, he gets mad at the dad because that's why he crashed the car. And she has none of it. She's like, just leave us alone. You know, like, I don't want to go home. I just want to protect my dad from dying. He's like, yeah, I guess I get it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a whole lot of things happen in this movie. It's so, so good. It's very dense. It's, it's very dense. And it, and it's happening at a good pace as well. We meet a, we meet a, a couple. And, you know, he says that uh, the husband says that he'll take care of um, him and his baby and everything. And that his wife will do that. But he's like insane. He just oh, wants so to, he just wants to eat the baby? No, he doesn't want to eat the baby. Oh. He, just, he wants to remake the world after the disease is gone, and it's... You know what? He's going to keep the baby real safe. Uh, yeah. He's going to get a lot of followers real quick. Now, I'm not I'm not saying I endorse his vision. I'm just saying it can be very effective. Yeah, here's the problem, though. His wife is not even his wife. He used to work in the mines, and... That's sister wives. When, no, when the mines were, um, something went wrong at the mines. He shut the door on everyone who was working in there, including her previous husband, to save himself. And he basically kidnaps her and makes her his Stop wife. Home. Yes, there we go. That's the one. She tries to Yeah, she'll never leave. She'll yeah. be a great mother for the baby. This sounds like a great option. Beauty and the Beast did it. And it needs to expand his mind. Andy, Fumi, and the wife try to escape with Rosie, and she ends up getting killed, which is like the saddest thing ever, because she was the only person who could take care of Rosie. And the t clock is well, ticking. Well, apparently not. She died. <laughs> <laughs> the clock is ticking. And it's just, there's, oh, these zombies are so creepy. They, like, hibernate and they bury their heads in the sand. To, like, ostriches? Get away from, like, the light. Yeah, like, they, like, ostriches. That's actually kind of interesting. I, it's something that I kind of like as a zombie trait if they, like, are afraid of light. Because that makes, you know, A, the night more dangerous. And, you know, going into any sort of dark you know, dark place dangerous, but it makes travel more possible. It does. Um, I mean, I liked this movie similar to the ways that I liked A uh, Last of Us. There's like a lot of like personal relationship, personal relationships that kind of make the plot go a little bit further. You're saying there's and a character like Ellie? There is, no, sorry, that was actually an iZombie. Uh, not anymore though. Unfortunately. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Megan, you've been around a lot of child death. <laughs> the good thing at the end, it all works out. So I mean, it's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Good, 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 good. I would suggest watching the movie. I really, I really enjoyed it. Um, there's not really much else that I really want to touch on about it. Actually, Kyle was scrolling through IMDb. Now I'm real, real curious. Do you have more information on that? Okay. So it's was... Martin Freeman. That was from Martin Freeman. Yeah. So I was looking up just a few other movies while you uh, you were describing this, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. What else has he been in? Uh, the 2009 short HIV the Musical. What? <laughs> yes. All I can think of is Team America World Police. But with yeah, Martin that's... Freeman. Can Martin Freeman sing? Probably. I can't think of a role where I've seen him sing. I'm honestly like, the rest of these are just... Do you think he needs help singing? <laughs> I mean, I'm okay with actors being dubbed over. Oh, yeah, you I mean, of the dead. Ewan McGregor can sing. Wait, wait, well, hold up. Martin Freeman's he's in, in all hot, three. Yeah, he's in all three. In like Hot Fuzz, Shaun of the Dead, and the other one. What's that? That's it. How did I miss, <laughs> how did I miss that? Who was, he, who was he in Shaun of the Dead? Declan. He was the... He was... Yeah, I don't okay. remember character names Okay, either. okay, Megan. You know yeah, when uh, Sean's team runs into that other zombie team that's actually doing good? Yes. He's in that team. Oh, okay. There we go. I just totally went over my head. I didn't even realize who, like, just a 30-second 30 30 second clip, right? Yeah. Martin Freeman just cameos. I think outside of World's End, he's just in each of the movies for, like, five seconds because Edgar Wright's an awesome director, and he's like, I want to be in that. <laughs> I mean, come on. If Edgar Wright walked up to you and said, hey, I got a role for you, that's five seconds long in a movie. I didn't expect Hugh Jackman to sing. I did not see that. Hugh Jackman's Ooh. a fantastic singer. He's a Broadway-trained singer. The greatest showman. Oh. He can take me to the other side. Um, uh, my favorite story is during one of his early shows, uh, he thought uh, tights were like a wetsuit, and he really had to go on stage. So he just let it go during the middle of the performance, and he's in white tights. Oh, what? <laughs> no. I hope he was hydrated. Sear <laughs> that right up for you. See, my favorite is uh, he was doing an interview with BBC Radio 1, and they're like, we made a song. Can you sing it? And it's Wolverine the Musical. <gasps> Can we, we need to track this down now. I will find I it. I want it. I want to hear this. 
Yeah, what did, does he do anything else like actually sing the role in movies? I'm trying to think. Oh, Les Mis. Les Mis. Yeah, that's right. He was in that too. Yeah, he was the good part of it, unlike Russell Crowe. He <laughs> wasn't that bad. <laughs> I, I'm with Kyle on this That's one. not I, how you endorse a singing at, you know, no, a no, no, no. I People rip on Russell Crowe so hard. He's not a bad singer. It's the wrong genre for him. Yeah. What is that song? What genre is Russell Crowe? What is that? Um, Fighting around the world. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> like, that, that's his genre. No, no it's more time. making songs. Fighting around the world. Thank you. That's he's the more trained to do classic folk, a more subdued style. Whereas, like Broadway style, is like you gotta be grandiose. You gotta be big. He just doesn't have the big voice. He's got the quiet voice. Wasn't that bad of a performance in my Ms. Blah Blah Blah? <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen what is. I suggest um, you can easily find on on YouTube the Broadway version. Oh, we're just gonna kidnap Megan and just subject her to a bunch of musicals one day, yes, and please. we will sing at her obnoxiously. <laughs> Ooh, that means I could get her to watch my Evil Dead the musical. Wait, is there's an Evil Dead musical? It's the only musical with Splatter Zone. <gasps> I would have went to that. Yeah, I would too if they had ever been in Toronto. While I'm there. I've got a great movie to watch, watch by Hugh Jackman. It's called Tourism Australia. Dundee, the son of the legend, returns home. Tourism Australia. Dundee returns home. I'm in. Same. Yeah, okay, let's Why? watch it. Because he's, he's the national treasure of Australia. Uh. Hey, they, they have two famous crocodile hunters. They have Steve, Ir Steve Irwin... And they have Crocodile Dundee. That's really. Sure they're both dead. I don't think. I don't think Dundee, Dundee is. Died. No. Also, he doesn't fight real crocodiles. He just does in the movies. Also, Steve Irwin's son, Rob Irwin, has taken up the mantle. Yes, he has. Uh, have you ever had a chance to look, look up Rob Irwin on uh, YouTube? Because he is not only the spitting image of his dad. He's got that same natural enthusiasm for animals and life. Good. We need, we need, because I grew up watching Crocodile Hunter. I love Steve Irwin. I had the chance to meet him, and we missed him by two days, and I cried. Okay. Maybe you'll, uh, you'll meet his son. Maybe. That would be interesting. You know, just be like, hey, dude, I'm glad that you're taking the torch. Stay away from stingrays. Stay away from <laughs> <laughs> Rob Irwin seems like the kind of guy who would find that specific stingray and be like, sorry, little buddy. Exactly. And then he'll follow the same suit. <laughs> <laughs> Stingrays are evil. No. Yes, they are. They're, They're like adorable. Like They're like little mouse. You just don't ride them. Yes. I but imagine. how will I play Pokemon? Have you you get seen? a Manta Ray. Yes. Yeah, no, Mantine. St Stingrays yeah. are smaller. Yeah, You're thinking oh. of a Manta Ray. Oh. Manta Rays are the big majestic ones. That are See, like and the they're the good the ones, and that's why Stingrays are evil, because you can't ride them. If you can't ride it, it's evil. That's so just now the it's evil. I can... Well, <laughs> oh come on. no! I can finish that sentence, please. Uh, he rides Kratos, of course. And on <laughs> that note, we're going to head to our first break here, folks. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into Thunder Geeks, brought to you by 102.7 FM, C I L U, or around the world at luradio.ca, or streaming live at facebook.com/slash Thunder Geeks Speak. We're your Thunder Geeks, and we'll be right back. <laughs> Did I do that? Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back, of course. Uh, we're your Thunder Geeks, and uh, we're brought to you by 102.7 FM C I L U. Around the world at LU Radio.ca or streaming live at Facebook.com slash Thunder Geeks Speak. That I'm was by Carl Jr. As Days Go By by uh, Jesse Frederick. Of course, the theme to Family Matters. Kyle, do you want to tell me why Family Matters? Hereditary sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so before Kyle goes on it on his tangent, I want to say I kind of invited me to see this movie, and I refuse to see it based on the studio that made it because they made The Witch and it comes at night. Both, Both sucked. Both trailers are set up to look terrifying and well done. The critics love these movies, giving them like ninety nine percent. We fell I'm, asleep during The Witch. <laughs> Both of us. <laughs> yeah. The Witch. Yeah. Vich, V V I T C H. Vich, Vich. So yeah, after seeing that, it was like by that same studio. I just looked at Kyle and said, "I'm not, I'm not giving this my money. I don't want to see this." Okay, so this movie for like the last three months has been hyped to be the scariest thing, quote yeah. unquote, the Exorcist of our generation. Whoa. There are 
headless floating bodies that are really badly CGI done. So it's the Scooby-Doo of our generation. Oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, so the movie starts, Grandma died. Oh, poor Grandma. Okay, so you start seeing these symbols and words everywhere. Not Any- really sensible words, and just a random symbol that we'll get to at the end of the movie. So it stars these family, regular family, mom and dad, uh, a special daughter and their son, Peter, I think. Now, Peter's played by Alex Wolf. He's been in a lot of things recently. Is he related to Ben Wolf? I, that's Ben Wolf Hart. Oh, okay, my bad, my bad. Yeah, so he's been, I know he was in um, the Jeffrey Dahmer movie that I watched recently. <laughs> and um, yeah, Jumanji, the young Spencer at the beginning. Oh, okay. That guy. So he apparently got PTSD from this movie. All right? Oh, that sounds like some producer shenanigans. That's that's Blair Witch Project marketing right there. I guess if he's afraid of ants, because that's the scariest part of the movie. Is the ants? Is ants. I had a dream once there was ants coming out of a computer screen. And that was scary, so I don't know. Oh, no, they, these really... Visually, this movie's fantastic. Awesome scenery. Awesome shots, right? And it does not fray from gore, fray stray from gore. Like you watch people like ants burst out of this guy's mouth and like crawling out of his eyes and would things you, like that. Would you say there are ants in his pants? There were ants in the whole house. <laughs> <laughs> ants, but, but including CG the pants. CG ants. Well, they can't release real ants. Why not? Because they'd all be going, "Yeah, you should brush your teeth, young man." Hey, Kyle, what's Pink Panther's favorite song? I wish the ant died in this. <laughs> now, see, here's the weird part. After this grandma showing, she doesn't. Nothing happens with her until like again the end of the movie. So, the, this being about a grandma haunting, false. It's not grandma. Not ha- grandma. They do pull an incredible plot twist that I really don't want to say to spoil because it's, it's not that. Is it grandma's people. sister? No. Not no. her aunt. It is, it is a member of the family. That it's the daughter's aunt? grandma. The, we're going to get into some stuff later about that. <laughs> oh my God, I'm right. There's Pazuzu in this. Don't worry. Pazuzu. Yeah, it's amazing. So... The mother is, uh, I guess, she makes miniature dioramas for art museums. Yeah, it was it was in the trailer. She's, like, painting all these little miniatures and stuff, like, really precisely, like, super intensely into it. Yeah, that's, like, she does that through the whole movie. Like, and, and nothing else? She goes to a support group once and then, like, unloads on these poor people and then just never shows up again to said thing. She just pull up in the parking lot and then just leaves. Weird question. Does this movie have set up but no payoff? Okay, so the payoff's not spooky. But it actually has payoff on like the last two? Somewhat, yes. Okay, good. Yes. But is it is it is there spooky in the middle? Yes, like, there are there are okay. some uh like notably spooky things and very, very well placed background things. Oh, okay. So, like, when characters are talking and things like that, you, you can, can see, see like people and stuff in the back. And it caught me off guard several times. See, that's the kind of scares that I like. <laughs> and I, I, it's always more clever to give you a fear that you know is there, but the characters don't, so you care more for them rather than ooga booga loud sounds. And then, <laughs> no, the, the sound you get through this whole movie. So the daughter has a tick. So she goes all the time, the whole movie. So when they're driving, quiet scene. And now people in the audience are doing it. Alyssa Edward. It's like you, you hear like a very silent, like well intense scene, and just someone in the background will be like. <laughs> so like six throws over, someone starts laughing, and then someone in the corner goes. <laughs> So this movie doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> and sounds like the greatest version of Marco Polo. That, like, there's okay. So there's one really, really intense scene. The mother has uh, issues with sleepwalking. There was a point in one one point in her life where she was above her children, covering them in paint, then are ready to strike a match. Ooh. What? Yeah. Now she is the worst mother I have seen in a long time. <laughs> 
because in one one scene, the the boy uh, who just suffered like a really really bad tragedy, right? Like he's done. You can see he's just emotionally destroyed. She's standing in his room and just dead silent. All I hear is, "I wish I never had you." So one guy in the back goes, "Whoa!" <laughs> <laughs> All right, this okay. scene's already ruined. So let's see what else this is going through. Is that one guy you? I, yeah. So I. Um, <laughs> So as she's, she's talking, she's saying these things just like, I tried to everything to get you out of the womb. Like, everything they told me not to do, I was doing. And she covers her mouth after every one. And I'm like, eventually you just got to stop covering your mouth and accept the fact that you're destroying your child in front of you. All the, so the, the father is just ignorant to this whole thing. He's oh. just like, no, she's fine. He's fine. No, no. The kid's bashing his head off in, like, the school desk, breaking their noses and, like, snapping arms and clicking. Because <laughs> not only does the daughter do it, they all eventually do it. Yeah. Because, oh, yeah. Because That's it's so dumb. Hereditary? Because it's hereditary? Oh. So it becomes a ghost noise. Now, I have to sit there and the, the grudge noise? Great. Uh, Scary. Someone clicking their tongue at me in the corner of the room. I'm gonna go stop. Why? Do, what do you want? What do you want? What are you timing for? I can't. So the actress is fantastic. All right, the one who plays this daughter. However, she's not terrifying in the slightest. How can you be a child and not be terrifying? Exactly. Children are horrific just in regular time. She makes dolls and things out of garbage and cuts off a bird's head to use it. That's creative. That's scarier than her standing in the corner going, How did she attach the head? Super glue? Pro- probably. This is just an accepted thing she does. You really should have used like a two-part epoxy if you're going to go like with uh, organic material to like a more solid base. Like, But what was the uh, the doll body here? I'm really... Intrigued about this part. I don't know. I think an Altoids container. An Altoids container. Oh, that's creative. It's a metal. <laughs> oh yeah, no, she's got pliers like that. If you keep the mints inside, it'll counteract the smell. Now, again, we're gonna go back to the mother of the year here. The son goes. I need. I'm going to go to a party tonight. A school get together, a barbecue, let's say. Now, she's like six years younger than this guy. Okay. Mother goes, you're going to take her to the party. Why? That's not a good idea. He openly accepts that there's, he's going to be drinking and there's alcohol at this party. Send your daughter to Why not? So things go awry at said party. Oh. Turns out the daughter has a nut allergy. Oh, no. <laughs> and they're making cake Ooh. with nuts in it. So she just goes ham on it. Guess what? We're wait, in the wait, country. Wait. Would you say she went nuts for it? I mean, she clicked a few times. I don't know if that means she's happy or not. But So as there, for some reason, this party is in the middle of like the desert in a house. I don't know. Pit party. So No, 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 no. In a very nice, extravagant mansion. Oh, just in the desert. Just in the desert. In a rich purple house. Just so they're far enough away. Oh, so they're out of cell phone range? Yeah, yeah. So he has to drive oh. his sister to the hospital. Cell phones ruin like every horror movie now. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So he has to rush and, you know, an accident occurs. Now, I don't know if this guy is like going to continue being in a serious acting role. He cannot, cannot cry. <laughs> because... The second he does, he sounds like something is dying in the corner because he goes, (laughs) yeah, there's a dying giraffe in the bush. And somebody's like, what's, what is that noise? And all of us are laughing in the theater because this kid's just like, (laughs) and we're like, what's wrong? I, 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 did you get hurt, son? This, this girl has a nut allergy. Mom told her to go. No one thought to bring an EpiPen? No, they talked about it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're, they're, they're $70 a pop. She couldn't afford it. You they were the... fine. Ma had smokes to buy. No, they, they have a house with like 17 rooms for some reason with like six people that live in it. 
that grandma died, so that room's sealed off now. That housing crisis was real nice to that family. It really was. <laughs> <laughs> so throughout the, this movie, right, the dad is like the the sane person, let's say. He's the one keeping it together. Now, he has, I'm pretty sure he's like a doctor of some form, okay? When would you call it to send your your wife to an insane asylum, all right? Not once when all of this kid is getting screamed at at home and the mother's telling him, I tried to miscarry you. Hmm, that's probably not something. Now, the mother- That's just angst. The mother goes ahead and makes a full-on diorama of said accident. <laughs> that's, you know, showing love for your hobbies. At this point, the got, dad's like, okay, this is this is ridiculous. And now we bring seances into this. Are you ready? What? When did witches get involved? <laughs> grandma. Now, this is, this is, uh, yeah, actually, grandma. Uh, <laughs> see, this is a, an interesting form of seance that I've seen where you have to said, put your hand on a glass with no pressure. And in order for the spirit to respond, they slide glass left or right. <clears throat> a Ouija board? No, no, there's no board. Yeah. It's just a cup on a table. Yeah, they don't want to pay house, bro. It's a talking board, okay? That's what the Ouija board was before. Now, now they have a link system. A special item that binds, binds you to said uh, spirit. Oh, yeah. Did you get the Pokemon battle? No. Oh, just you. <laughs> <laughs> so, they, they get this, this woman uh, lost her children by drowning, and she's all hysteric, and she's the one who starts going into the seance thing. Now she convinces the other mother that no, this is real. Like you can you can talk to your daughter because the, she uses a chalkboard, so her her son can write on the chalkboard, right? Now this daughter draws uh, as well, so you can see in the book things that are being like made, mm. but it serves no purpose oh. until the end. So they like, they set it up. They kind of ignore it for a while to you know push out the runtime and like okay here's the actual story. Well, because like yeah, it was like a short film with filler in the middle. <laughs> See, like the, the thing is, the wife is in in all her hysterics convinces the son and father to do said seance thing too, and um, it goes well. Oh, as most well. seances do, you know. Yes. Now we're gonna introduce the cult to this. <laughs> okay, this is like going off the deep end. We have a cult system at the end. So this all just pops in like how, like how long to the end of the movie would you say this pops in? Mm, I'd say a good 20 minutes. 20 minutes for the end. Ooh. And you get to start here. That's the perfect time to throw in a bunch of new plot points. That comes in full force. Turns out there was a long time spirit of a dead lord of hell. Okay. Named Pyman. You mean not mine? No, 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 no. Pie man. Now, does he, he like cherry or lemon meringue? He wishes to be in a male host to get his full power. House call. Okay. Now, he for some reason was in grandma. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to judge how grandma identifies. I accept her and love her. And now, once this is brought in. The, the the headless bodies begin to move. Oh, and not just move; they begin to do the thrill dance. Oh boy! So oh, they start in me. the background of after you in, get introduced to said Pyman. Old naked people start appearing in the background. <laughs> That's scary. Full fledged, like wiener out, <laughs> like they're flopping it all around you in this in the bush now. You're kind of Which silly you're this more movie. or less wiener than action point. There's a lot. A lot. A lot and of there's old one wieners. specific guy that keeps getting focused on, so I'm pretty sure he's either the director that's really proud that he's a grower, not a shower. But <laughs> <laughs> they they just begin like bowing and worshipping I mean if it's that big. Hyman in his new host body and then it ends. Who is the host body? The, the Peter the down Peter one. Dude. The son, for some reason, because the yell, the one lady yelled at him, "I expel you, Peter!" At, from across the schoolyard. So, so the rest of the family doesn't matter. 
dad dies because he throws a book in a fire. I don't know. <laughs> and then mother's upstairs floating, cutting her head off. I don't know what's going on at this point. <laughs> Nobody in the theater knows okay, what's wait, going wait. on at this point. This sounds like someone went to watch The Skeleton Key on some, uh, uh, influ- on some influential substances. And then just were just like, ha ha. And then they wrote a, wrote a script. But, okay, so, so why is it called hereditary? I guess because grandma was in the cult, so the mom's going to be in a cult, and then the son's in the cult, but the cult doesn't get involved until the end. But then why do they click? I don't know! They just decided to add that in for some stupid reason. To give a... Like... <laughs> Maybe it's because family matters. No, it doesn't! The cult is the worst family ever! <laughs> Dad doesn't want to say anything because he's too afraid mom's going to go nuts and probably burn the house down. Turns well, it out doesn't there's... even matter now. No! Because he lit him, he was on fire somewhere. <laughs> like... Can the cult at least have like cool outfits? They're naked! That's a cool outfit. They're all naked! <laughs> you know, that's... In the treehouse! That's the beauty of nature. In the treehouse. How... They have a treehouse! Oh, how big's the treehouse? Hold house? on. They have 16 rooms in this house, and they also need the treehouse. They also needed a treehouse to worship Pyman. Get out. Okay, well, how do they? How big is this treehouse? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say it's like Bart's. That's a pretty impressive how many, treehouse. How though. many people fit in the treehouse? Uh, according to the end of this movie, like 45. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. Did you see the episode of The Simpsons where like there was like Bart would turn his his uh, treehouse into like a party place? Yes. Well, look, there's tons of people in his, his treehouse, so it's yeah, it's doable. Do you know what's the best children. part though? I can give none of that is any bit spoiler for the twists that happen. There's more things that happen in this movie. <laughs> the the bitch had at least a regular storyline. It, it comes at night. It didn't come, but they were there at night. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why is this movie so popular? I, I can actually sum that up. Because you don't understand, man. The critics, the critics are like on a different level than you. You're just I stupid. want to be on that level. Wow, no, level. there is no level. They just pretend to know what's going on so they sound smart. You need ghost inspiration. <laughs> like, that's just... <laughs> Hashtag... <laughs> wait, wait, how do you spell that, Andrew? So we can get the hashtag trending. Upside down exclamation mark at sign pound sign. I don't think you can put another pound sign in a hashtag. Oh, okay. So then uh, I'm going to say, you know that S that also has like a squiggle in the middle? That one. <laughs> I'm now more confused by what you're talking about than yeah. monetary. <laughs> we'll throw a thorn in there if you want. <laughs> uh, I just... <laughs> I would, le- I would tell people, tell people that to go one. see this in the theater just for the, the whole crowd response. Because it seems everybody is on the same level with just going, what is going on? Is this scary? <laughs> and then you just start laughing because, like, they're, they're having dinner. They're casually having dinner. And she yells at him like she's eat butters from South Park. <laughs> The argument literally goes, you sit there and you stare at me with your stupid face. And he goes, it's just my face. <laughs> what? Jeez, mom? Yeah, no, I'm like, okay, Butters, calm down. Like, oh, well, geez, geez mom, it's just, it's just my face, mom. And the dad's still just casually sitting there eating food like nothing's happening. And I'm like, they're going to kill each other in a minute, man. What was the dinner? <laughs> Chicken. <laughs> Fried or like pan or like. Uh, I don't know, they, the Peter was going at it like a barbarian, so I'm assuming <laughs> KFC. Oh, delicious. When was the last time anyone here actually had KFC? It was uh, disgusting. I Saturday. love KFC. It's disgusting. Give me 10 days. Do you, know, you don't understand, I have like 15 coupons for KFC in my purse right now. And you haven't invited me? <laughs> Why haven't we gone on a KFC a thon, Megan? Yeah. <laughs> They're mine. <laughs> How come you get coupons from the Colonel? What's going on here? Yeah. Well, me and the Colonel have a uh, what, what's your special Kentucky arrangement. Do you name like the hot tub, like Cartman? No, no. KFC gravy? She's the person who figured out the Twitter code. Yes. To those listeners who don't know, KFC has 11 followers. No, 12 followers. No, it's 11, 11. Hold on. They're following them. Yeah, they have 
Eleven that's followers. That's Twitter works. Eleven the, herbs the, and spices. Yep, they have. They follow the five Spice Girls and six guys named Herb. <laughs> and, true story. The guy who figured that out got a painting of him and the Colonel. Then it's not Megan because she doesn't have a painting with her and the Colonel, and she only really gets coupons. So how do we know that Megan doesn't have a painting with the Colonel? When's the last time you were at her place? When's the last time she invited any of us over? <laughs> Maybe she's hiding the fact that she knows the Colonel. So many secrets, boys. So talking about psychopaths, you remember voices? Yes. How many Tupperware containers do you have, Megan? <laughs> oh, no. Not Megan, enough. Am I going to see not, you on the serial killer subreddit no, soon? No, I don't know. Wait, there's a subreddit for that? I'm not, motiv- I'm not motivated enough to be a serial killer. Come on. It's got a problem right now. They're really romanticizing, rom- romanticizing Ted Bundy. <laughs> Megan, if you can't be a serial killer, can you be a breakfast butcher? <laughs> 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 I think Tribal and I are very close to becoming our uh, serial killers with Andrew. I'm only one you, person. Yeah, you, you have can't to be kill a me. serial killer with one person. You have to clone me like Urkel I was gonna and say, then kill me like Urkel. I was going to say, hypothetically, what if you were like, had the wishes of like a hundred lives and every time you die, you just come back? Would oh, that like be, Mysterion. Yeah. Would that be serial killing if I repeatedly did kill you and you came back repeatedly? That's, that's just torture. Yeah, I mean, what we'd actually want to do would be, like, have extreme, um, um, uh, no, <laughs> no, that was, that was, I mean, if, if you're up for it, I mean, <laughs> I, I was thinking, uh, I, I can't say, well, the series of Johnny Knoxville, and like, yeah. Bear, like, near, near, near. No, there we go, there we go. So, I mean, if I can't die, I can do really extreme stunts. No, we've been over this. We, we can say the title of that movie, we just can't say the donkey part whole. Action Point's a fantastic movie. Yes, see that instead of the other thing. Yeah, it was a great movie. Apparently, a solid bear. apparently Johnny Knoxville <laughs> got most injured on this movie than any other movie. There was a point where um, he smacks his head hard enough that from that point and six weeks after that shoot, he was not allowed to sneeze or blow his nose because his eye would pop out. <gasps> what? Oh, okay, so with Action Point, is there a story? Yes, I can actually explain this. Can now, I- there was a place in the world known as Action Park. Action Park is the most lethal amusement park in American history. <laughs> not because it was some psychopaths doing but because safety was not a thing. <laughs> not a thing at all. And I want to go there. And people, they drowned, I think two of them drowned in the tidal pool alone. There were people that like got smoked off of cliffs and like things would detach and decapitate people. Man. All of that's in action point. <laughs> like they go, we're taking the brakes off everything and they're just going. Also, Chris Pontius is the best character in that movie. Man. Uh, there's one thing in the movie that actually makes me wonder, like, physics thing. They have a slide with a loop-loop. Is that actually physically possible? Can you get enough speed going down a water slide to do a full loop-loop? Yes. I think, I, they, I think they tested some, some kind of theory like that in, like, Mythbusters. It's possible. I think you can. I think you can. It depends on the angle and speed that you're going at, because you have to have enough momentum to carry yourself all the way around. The big, you know, and thing, and the, how big you are. But the big thing to be watching would be like as they're firing the water down, does it fall the loop, the loop, or does it just go? Because if water doesn't have the speed to go around it, you do not. That's very Ooh, true. Oh, you're gonna hit the dry part of the slide real fast. <laughs> not like that, but and you're gonna stop. Yeah, almost <laughs> instantly. And think about this, like you know, that episode of Simpsons where Homer gets stuck in the water slide. <laughs> if you get stuck at the loop de loop point. Oh no. Like think about this. Like not even like fat stuck. Like if you don't have enough in momentum to go all the way around. Oh, I thought we were talking about like an open water slide. We're talking about like a tube. Tube. We're talking tube. Yeah, then tube. I definitely I believe I believe that you can go into the loop de loop with a tube. Hold on, do you think prior, before this sentence, <laughs> do you think an open, an open water slide was going to work? Yes! <laughs> what? Yes! No, no, let's build it and let's shoot Megan down it. Yes! Just like, put a slip and slide down with like a hill and have her go slide Mach 10. Okay, Thunder Bay City Council, uh, whoever's going to run for mayor, here's our suggestion. So, we, loop need, loop. we need the most extreme water slide in... Canadian Every, history? Everyone's history. My favorite is in the movie, they have water slides that come out pointing at the same like location. So if two people went at the same time, they'd just be like, 
<laughs> and smoke in the air. Here's the thing, though. I know without a doubt, if I went with either of you guys, we'd oh. count down like three, two, one. Kyle would bust in half, so it'd have to be me. That's the, I'd, like, I'd go flying out of there. Because, like, they, they have a lot of things in this movie that are mm, fantastic. And it's all Knoxville's, like, creation. Like, the catapult. They built a catapult to launch them into a small kiddie pool. <laughs> However, that goes awry, and it goes directly into the side of a barn. <laughs> and is actually John Knoxville being launched into the side of a barn. All of these things are Knoxville actually doing said stunts. <laughs> Eat it, Tom Cruise. And he, he also requested that any of the stunt performers don't use like most of the safety equipment. So he turned the set into... <coughs> actual barn. point. Yeah, he turned the set into like the most lethal part. A lot of amazing actors in this as well. Including the bear. The bear deserves like a yes. standing ovation. An alcoholic bear. Like an actually alcoholic bear? It yeah. takes beer cans, puts them in its mouth, and just <gasps> slams back. Bear. Yeah, it's fantastic. <clears throat> it's a Russian bear. <laughs> On that note, we're going to head to our next break here, folks. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into Thunder Geeks brought to you by 102.7 FM C. I-L-U, around the world at luradio.ca, or streaming live at facebook.com slash thundergeekspeak. For your Thunder Geeks, we'll be right back. And we're back. You're listening to Thunder Geeks, brought to you by 102.7 FM, C-I-L-U, around the world at luradio.ca, or streaming live at facebook.com slash thundergeekspeak, if you want to take a peek inside the studio. That was Press Start to Play with 8-Bit Memory. <laughs> okay, no more clicks. No, no more clicks. We are we are done with the family. Family is over. Now so, it's time. Family time is over. Family time is over. Game time is now. Hey Rob, what you been up to? This Kyle week? and I decided to watch a, a series that's actually not new, new, but still new-ish. Good game. Yes. yes. Uh, it's the Game Grumps YouTube Red series. It was not created by the Game Grumps. But it um, stars them. It stars the Game Grumps. Yes. Uh, Jesse Cox and Michelle Morrow were the ones who uh, wrote and directed the thing. Aaron was the one was one of the producers on it as well. And I think Danny did the music. Oh, yeah, Cheers. dang, dang. But, oh, my good golly molly, was this hilarious. Like, the basic story is your traditional, like, sports story where the underdogs are, are coming up from behind to win. But the jokes and the sport itself is so irrelevant. They... They portray the whole esports scene when it comes to like League of Legends, Dota 2, that sort of thing, perfectly. They have the same setups in during the esports tournaments. They have the same screens. They have the same sort of talk between the teammates. I just wish actual esports would let them use the same kind of names. <laughs> yeah, we, we for obvious CRTC reasons can't say their oh, gamer names. <laughs> Booger Boss. Now, there we go. That was one we could use. Yeah. It's Steaming uh, masculine ejaculatory. Oh my god. Shortened. But yeah, um, Danny and Aaron play characters and oh it, Danny uh <laughs> I always forget his real name, Danny Sexbang. Daniel Abaddon. Thank you. Uh plays this weird hybridization of mine and Kyle's personality. He's got my energetic optimism. Combined with Kyle's nihilistic <laughs> sense of humor. <laughs> I'm sure that animal's a jerk. <laughs> okay, so before we go into the plot, I will say that was my f- favorite joke of the entire series. It's They're just driving to their first sports game. All you hear is, and you just see Dan's face go, dead hand. I'm sure that animal's a jerk. <laughs> I enjoy just Danny's like sense of physical comedy and his timing. Like his introduction, you know, just sitting down, put awkwardly pushing laundry out of the way, it's still winding up sitting on the basket, and then like when he goes and sits beside Aaron <laughs> and he just puts his feet on the table, crosses them, knocks beer cans out of the way. It's the way that they they set up like Danny and Aaron. I'm pretty sure that's just who they are. <laughs> like. <laughs> Because Aaron has, as they make the joke, he has the two moods where he's either, you know, oh, yeah, 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 so cool for or just a raging upset. <laughs> that's, that's Aaron. That's you. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and his introduction where you like, Danny comes home, but Aaron's sitting on the couch in his underwear playing games. And before, you know, Danny walks in, he runs over, puts shorts on and runs over. He's like, yeah, I did some stuff today. Aaron's. <laughs> Yeah, what'd you do? 
sit on the couch all day and play video games? Yeah. Good. <laughs> that is, again, me and Kyle. It's, there's been moments where I've left the house, gone for an eight-hour shift, come home, and Kyle is in the exact same spot playing the exact same <laughs> game, and all I can do is think, do you at least go to the bathroom no. today? <laughs> yeah. Don't need to. He, he is that well-trained that he just... He, he's like Kim Jong-un. He just makes use of all the pool. Did, didn't you guys hear a conspiracy yeah, theory that yeah, like, yeah. propaganda? Yeah. Because he's yeah. just so efficient. He's completely efficient. Yeah. Which is Kyle. He could also drive a uh, complicated dirt roads at 80 miles per hour when he was four. He, yeah. is, he is an amazing, great leader, and we are blessed to have him all. All Thank praise you. to the great Korea. Oh. True Korea. True Korea. Best Thank Korea. I'm best Korea. But yeah, so it starts off with... Uh, Dang, discovering it's like, hey, we can win a million dollars if we do this esports thing. Let's be esports. They Let's be esports people. They are esports people. They begin to play uh, Kill Corp, which is essentially Dota 2. With funnier characters. With amazing character names. Manatine, Double D-Rex. Now, they have it almost looking exactly like Dota 2 as well, down to the, in the show, the text that appears is the text from Dota 2. Now, he, the funny part about this that I was talking to Rob, too, that all spawned from a random custom map on Warcraft 3. Yes. That Dawn whole, of the Ages. Yeah. Yeah. G-O-T-A. So that whole thing spawned from a custom map, and now you have, you know, shows being, like, plot-centricated around it. They were on ESPN, too. <laughs> we rule now. Sports. That's sports. And the way Danny compiles his esports team is first off inspired uh, is uh they drive up to a random kid's house and aaron's like did you stalk a person he's like no we stalked a kid <laughs> give somebody his ip address you give a man somebody a, uh, a man's ip address no a young boys <laughs> <laughs> it just uh, and then great. we yeah then we get our uh our first kid was that um he is that Kid who you play online who just has all the racial slurs. It's the 13-year-old on Xbox Live. Yes. yes. That's exactly what he is. You hate him, and he keeps giving headshots because he's a damn camper, and you're not just mad and jelly because you can't kill him. He's good at what he does, and he uses that to his advantage. In the, yes. in the, like in the future, he does turn people against each other and like flame and report so they lose spots in the tournament. <laughs> Legitimate strategies. <laughs> and then we come to our next player, who is a injured tennis player who had aspirations to be in the Olympics. She's funny because she likes the challenge of some things to the point Ooh. where she gives herself a stroke. Because <laughs> she plays wait, wait. nothing but Dota 2 for like two or three days. Oh, true. This oh, is the same oh. actress that plays Jordan Gladwell in Eye Zombie. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, she, okay, because she's really fantastic in this. She Most is. of this cast is like legitimate actors. They, the, it actually is uh, funded by Blumhouse Productions as well. Like the, it's, it's a good movie. show. That thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, it, when we were watching, I think it was like the fourth or fifth episode in that we just didn't like change it right away. And all of a sudden that happened, and we're like, oh, this is actually funded. Wow. Then we get our third player, uh, Dan Danny and Aaron's landlord, who they trick into thinking he's a good player, so they'll sponsor him and not evict them. He pays for everything. <laughs> the important and, part. And he is awful. It's like if I thought I could do games, and there are moments where he's like, I'm, who's that guy? That's you. But he's dying. I got my real high score in Gauntlet, 27,000. <laughs> First person tries it, they get like 40-something thousand. He's like, oh, they're really good at this. <laughs> no. And one of the funny things they do with this character is that he's openly gay. And the thing is that, like, little kid who's doing all the slurs... You gonna say it to my face? And the kid just shuts up, and he's like... <laughs> there, one of the funny things about like, that kid as well is they try to, you know, talk to him to not be that kind of person. Stop being a third turn on Xbox Live. Guess I mean... what? He loses all ability to play that game. Oh, oh. no. So he has to. He oh. has to rage on somebody. I've seen it with Kyle where 
Yeah, he he gets in the zone by raging and yelling. Thankfully, have... not hurtful things like that. But there are moments where I've been in, in bed and I just hear Kyle screaming and yelling, and it'll take me a few seconds. I'm like, oh, he's just playing with him, whatever. Yeah, he couldn't get good. I think I'm like three <laughs> mice in the graveyard, <laughs> my keyboards, <laughs> a desk, and a wall. A few knuckles. I've had the same mouse for like 12 years and has the secret to free energy. <laughs> I miss my 15 button mouse. <laughs> and then we get our final contributor. Uh, she was an esports announcer because she was pretty, but she's like, but I actually like playing games. I'm good. And she's one of the makers of the show. That would be Michelle Morrow. Oh, yes. Yeah. And weirdly enough, the show's premise is, you know, People, all people play games. Don't judge them by how they look. My favorite is when they bring in the all-female Korean team. Ha! <laughs> and, like, Michelle walks in. Koreans are scary at every game. They, they invited her to, you know, play on the, the team for a little bit. And she walks in and immediately goes, uh-oh, I've seen this before. Where's your manager? He's, she's immediately thinking that this is, you know, an adult site that yep. people are using. So she's just like, if you guys need help, like... I'm here for you. You can you can get out of this. And they're like, no, 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 we're just, we love this. And the funny thing is the only reason she doesn't join is because these women are strict, no meat, no no bad foods, no kashpoinkle before a game. And she's like, no, I can't do that. I eat bacon. The holy virtue team that they are, because, again, Koreans are ridiculous at Video games, they're, they're well-trained. They have schools for it. But, let's put it this way. The LCS, the League of Legends World Championships, they do bring, like, you know, there's U.S., Europe, and Asia that get together. Now, U- U.S. and uh, Europe, about even. You know, Korea comes in and they're like, what's going on? We're going to play completely different champions. And when, and everybody goes, all right, we'll try again next year. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like our women's hockey team in uh, the Olympics. It's like, well, you guys can try, but we're gonna win. So it turns out Aaron's character was a secret master of Dota before he his mom found out his password and deleted his account. A la that video of the raging kid who sticks the remote up his hiney. Okay, yeah, it's it's a classic internet video where we see a kid completely flip out because his file account is I think it was hacked. His mom deleted. Or his mom just deleted it. Yeah, and it is an amazing tantrum of epic proportions with you know twists and turns and like magic tricks in between. <laughs> I'm not a very violent individual. The human that would be responsible for deleting my WoW account, I will see you in the graveyard, my friend. See, there's a lot of We're things I would down. do to mess with Kyle, and he knows this. I would do it. That's the line I wouldn't even come close to. I don't think a single person has been like, that's a good idea. No. I'm going to delete his character. <laughs> no. Go ahead. <laughs> Make it the last thing you'll ever do. And then Danny becomes the coach of the team because he can't play video games, but he, he can be inspirational in the strangest of ways. He's very good at motivating his team to uh, play better at the game. Oh, and I and that's where I feel like day. that's where I feel like the relation with me and Danny is that I, I'm the positive one that goes, yeah, you can do it. I believe. Yeah, Rob has that blind optimism of you know, hey, if we just try, it might happen, and that stuff happens. That's why we're so, here. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's horrific and scary. At least I only set you on fire once. <laughs> once. One time, just one once. time. I have never repeatedly set anyone on fire. No <laughs> wait, that's why Wayne. I was about to say, yeah. sir, there are videos. <laughs> in defense, in defense, the first few times I lit them on fire were test runs. We want to see how flammable we could make him. Wow. <laughs> Apparently paint thinner works well, according to Hereditary. Yeah, no, we used a nail polish remover. Oh, that burns clean. Yeah, and not only that, but uh, we decided to line the inside of his hoodie with duct tape for extra fire protection. Cool. It worked. Oh. Don't try this at home, kids. <laughs> no, 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 no. Horrible idea. Um, because yeah, learn from our mistakes. There's scars. <laughs> no, no, there's always a scar from the firework in the face. <laughs> See, the more I hang out with you guys, the more I'm worried about how many times I'm going to be set on fire. You in don't the, have in to the worry. Future. You don't have to worry. Like I said, Megan, just just once. Just everyone, one. Everyone gets Everybody one. gets one. Kyle's thinking, he's like, we, we did handcuff you and beat the crap. 
crud out of you. <coughs> that started me down a very dangerous road. Don't beware of Rob. Terry Crews. Oh yeah, that was my well, one of my favorite parts of the episode, just having future president Terry Crews. And, and the, the other lady that he's with is the BattleBots judge. And, oh. and oh, Dan Harmon. Thank you. Dan Harmon shows up to fire Michelle Moore over her job, and then he leaves because it's Dan Harmon. And got that cameo in there. Right. <laughs> There's also uh, Ninja Brian's cameo. I missed that entire as an it's assassin. In the last ep- it's in the last episode. Oh, oh okay. He, it just shows Brian Wet as an assassin, and I'm like, he's here. Somewhere somebody's a dying. So how many episodes is it? Uh, I believe Six. eight. Yeah, it's, it's a relatively short series, but they keep it like there's no filler episodes. It's all quite, quite goes forward. It it wraps everything up that you needed to. Yeah. All of the storylines that were open, anything that you could think of was all wrapped up. Though you will, you'll see it soon. Uh, my favorite scene with Danny is actually um, <coughs> to teach him to be mean. Because oh, he, he physically can't be mean to people. So Michelle brings her very young niece and tells her, <laughs> he's got your Barbie. Oh. There's no Barbie. And Danny's <laughs> just got to say it. It's like, I don't have it. And it winds <laughs> up with like a table full of like virgin <laughs> drinks because they're just having a time and Danny's being the happiest person. <laughs> Makes a Barbie out of like cocktail stuff. <laughs> and it's just, he, he couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. Now, there was something that I could do this week. Could. And, well, I did. And I'm both happy and horridly disappointed. Which, it sounds like the right uh, reaction to the uh, <laughs> sequel to Shaq Fu. Shaq Fu, Legend is Reborn. You're welcome. I'm, so I'm happy this game exists. It, uh, it went through on Indiegogo. It's... The problem with the game is that the game part sucks and the story is fantastic. I honestly <laughs> wish they would just turn this into Mike Tyson's Mysteries with Shaq. I need you to eventually look at the Steam store page. Because they always have about the game and its selling points. Mm-hmm. And the one in the middle is like, new rap track by Big Daddy himself, Shaq. Yeah, Big Diesel. Woo-wee. It's amazing. And there's, I guess, like, uh, Shaqtus. <laughs> okay, okay, so so there is some fun things within it. The best thing so far is the story itself, and it very, very self-aware, where, you know, they have the classic, uh, you know, foreigner becomes a kung fu master origin, where he's found by a uh, kung fu master as a, a young baby, and the only identifying uh, uh, mark on him is a, is a birthmark, which, of course, makes him the chosen one. And he's trained in the ancient art of Shi Wong Shi. And of course, one day their uh, temple's attacked, and him and his master have to flee, which is when he finds out his master is, in fact, uh, a protector of the world, and he was sh- secretly sh- training Shaq to become the next protector. Shaolin Showdown? With his 22 inch foot. Is, is it actually? Yes. Oh my god! Or is it size 22 shoe? Is that the same thing? I'm not actually sure. No. Okay. But still, he that's has like, he has giant feet. He is giant. He is a massive, massive man. He's got a new movie coming out. I know. Uh, it's going to be uh, Uncle Drew. Yes. I am very excited. Uh, me for too. It. Me I, too. I hope this is a uh, continuation of Shaq's amazing career, and this you know revives everything for us, and we're in a full on Shaq attack. Hey Kyle, I got. I want you to picture something. Close your eyes. Picture this. Shaquille O'Neal is your proctologist. I didn't have to imagine that. <laughs> one at the hospital. Now, gameplay is pretty simple. It is just wave after wave, very, you know, sort of beat em up, and it's not really complicated controls. You really just mash. Is it just like punch? Punch. Well, kicks, you kick. Punch, you kick. Kick, kick, kick punch. You kick, you kick pretty much all of the time. It's just mash, you know, square a bunch of times and hit circle, and you'll get a bigger ghost foot that kind of shoots out of Shaq. <laughs> uh, though he does get transformations from his master, so there's only two that I've got to see so far. Uh, the first one's Big Diesel, where Shaq tur- uh, Shre- <laughs> Shrek Shrek <laughs> Donkey. Shaq turns into a mech with Big D on the front, and he shoots missiles, <laughs> but he also overheats, so then you have to release the heat. 
And there's also the Shaktus transformation where he shoots <laughs> needles. So what you're saying is Shaq has a big D. Shaq is the big D. <laughs> I feel no shame for what I've done. The in-between cutscenes and the animation's a lot of fun. Honestly, that's really the only reason to play the game. I definitely would not purchase it at full price. Uh, I'm still gonna... I'm still it's gonna... Like, it's like $15 on Steam, just so you know. I want okay. I, I'm con- I'm I'm confident that this is not going to be a high selling disc. I want the achievement list from this. All right. Oh, I have the a- first one is choke the chicken. <laughs> counter a shack. You know you have to counterattack them. Yes. Uh, you know the juice is loose. Of course, of course. And uh, pole dancers one through three. <laughs> <laughs> we should take a pole dancing class. Yes. I can't even lift myself off the couch, let alone up a hole. <laughs> I know. That's why would it be? That's why it'd be great. No, there, no. there would be Megan, who's actually like successfully doing what she's supposed to be doing. Any ten-year-old could do this. And then there would be the three of us trying to do one pole move, probably wheezing like eighty-year-old men. Just. <laughs> I need to see, lift. See, no. Here's the thing. Andrew is like super competitive in what he does, and he's also super arrogant. You know what? And super motivated. Uh Uh-uh. He's got lower body strength. So I guarantee, I guarantee as soon as there was a poll in question, he would be like, I'm in the zone. I am going to climb up there, and I'm going to spin around it majestically and show all of you guys. Honestly, if we had a pole dancing competition, I'm going to try real hard. He would try. I will put myself back in the hospital just to beat this competition. <laughs> um, so if anyone out there has a pole dancing class, please come in contact with us, because we need this! And on that note, folks, we're going to wrap up the show here. But of course, if you want to continue the conversation about pole dancing online, you can do so on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash thundergeekspeak, or follow us on other social media on Instagram, Twitter, Snap, follow me posting episodes, subscribe to us on iTunes. Or uh, tune into our Monday game stream day at twitch.tv slash thundergeeks. Our final song here is going to be from Big Diesel himself, the Shackmeister, the Shackman, Shaquille O'Neal with Shaq Fu, the Legend Reborn. And I'm Andrew. I'm Rob. I'm Megan. Red sucked. <laughs> <laughs> and we're your Thunder Geeks. We'll see you next week.